You're listening to the B&H Photography Podcast. For over 40 years, B&H has been the professional source for photography, video, audio, and more. For your favorite gear, news, and reviews, visit us at bnh.com or download the BH app to your iPhone or Android device. Now here's your host, Alan White. Welcome to the BH Photography Podcast. Before we start up, just a reminder, take a moment and rate us on iTunes. Your feedback goes a long way around here. Today's topic is beach portraiture, specifically at Coney Island. Beach photography is by no means a new idea. Coney Island has been documented by numerous well-known and lesser well-known photographers for well over a century. Harold Feinstein was quoted as saying, when I first picked up a camera at age 15, I headed straight for Coney Island. Feinstein, Harvey Stein, Ouija, Robert Frank, and Bruce Glidden, not to mention lesser-known Coney shooters, including Bruce Handy, Eric Kowalski, Jim McDonald, and Kenny Lombardi, have documented Coney Island over the years. Some of these shooters actually live and work in Coney Island and photograph the place on a near-daily basis. And each of these photographers have left their own personal stamp on the subject. To help us connect the dots, John Harris and I will be talking today with Mark Hartman, an editorial travel and portrait photographer, whose recent portrait series on the beach at Coney Island has blown us away. Coney Island has been photographed inside and out, but it's the subjects, the austere style, and attention to color and detail that set Mark Hartman's work apart. Welcome, Mark. Thanks for having me. Also joining us is Todd Vorenkamp, a co-worker and a repeat visitor to our show. Welcome, gentlemen. You're originally from Boston, and you moved here a few years back. What got you to Coney Island in the first place? Coney Island uh, is just a mystical place, I think. You know, uh, this it's just amazing, and the international uh, group of people there. There's people, all kinds of people all go to this one beach. If you go to Brighton Beach, it's mostly Russian. Yes. If you go to yep. Fort Tilden, mostly hipsters. Uh, there's uh, Orchard Beach, which is mostly people from the Bronx. Uh, that also has a more diverse crowd. But Coney Island, everybody goes to Coney Island. That's why I like it. It makes sense that, that a lot of photographers would go there. I mean, not only just for the characters, but there's something like energetically every about wall place. has a story just, there. yeah it's just amazing and people go to be seen too they go you to know? be seen yeah. they go to be seen and that's a, that's a really helpful attribute to yeah. being a photographer there you know every train goes there <laughs> it's very accessible too i live in yes. uh downtown brooklyn dumbo so it's mm -hmm. just one train just take the train fall asleep or read a book or listen to a podcast or music and just cruise over there did you go to the beach a lot before you decided to start shooting there or was it kind of it's actually Part weird. I, I would always find myself going there, just a lot of my own or uh, just ever since I moved to New York, like over 11 years ago, I was always attracted to Coney Island. And uh, I always wanted to do something there, but I just never really just focused and did it, you know. When did you decide to kind of make this a project and when did you start going regularly with your camera? So I decided this summer. It uh, was basically like, I think it was a, a August 13th. I've been working on this project a little over a month. That's it? That's yeah. it? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. What were you photographing before Coney Island? Uh, it's interesting because I always kind of had this dilemma. I wanted to photograph something in New York. I wanted a project in New York, but I, I feel like most photographers... Uh, have the same dilemma, which is everything's been done. Oh yeah. New York doesn't look as cool anymore. I can't make photos that were made by Robert Frank or Diane Arbrist or whatever. <laughs> it's really hard, you know, to 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 do something. Uh, so before I, I I had this kind of story, you know, that I I had to go other places to make projects. So that was sort of a breakthrough for me doing the Coney Island thing. Is, is photographing people one to one like that also a new approach for you, or is that something you've been doing uh, previous? Yes, it, it 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 is. I always I have I've been making portraits for as long as I've been taking photos, but uh getting even more vulnerable with people and really connecting with people is is something that I've been working on with that project. But uh definitely portraits and and I've always been I've always been attracted to making portraits. Well, yeah, so like some great series I've seen, you know, on on the the, the yeah. one in India. Correct? Yeah, so and I did some stuff in, I did, mm -hmm. so I did some stuff in India, like the last personal projects I did was uh did some work in Panama. Uh, two projects I did in Panama, one project I did in Iceland, and then the, the and I did two projects in India, and the one I'm still working on, which is uh, photographing Nahung warrior Sikhs. So, oh, okay, they're like this last uh, warrior tribe. I want to jump on one thing you said about the vulnerability, and and that'll lead me into the idea of how you interact with the people. So, if you can kind of just well, first of all, I know you have a routine that you you mentioned before. I read about it, and could you tell us about your routine? 
And I think it's great that you've done it every day, that you kind of gave yourself this summer project. And it's also unbelievable that it's only been a month. because yeah, that's the, a, oh, That is the body one of work good is, body of work. Yeah. It really is. Oh, thanks a lot. And, I appreciate uh, that. So, yeah, talk about your routine a bit, and, and then we'll get to how you sure. interact with I think I just had a creative burst, too, you know. I was going through some stuff personally, too, that I, I had to, like, really want to focus into the work. So, mm-hmm. But uh, so my routine, it's it's I, I'm definitely a creature of habit, you know, and uh, and it's just establishing good habits for me and for most people is just hugely beneficial. So I would I would start honestly by I meditate every day. So I meditate. I would wake up, meditate, uh, eat some really healthy food, you know, and then and then head head to the beach. I would walk to the end of the boardwalk, sort of the start of Brighton Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would make a beeline for the shoreline. And then I would walk along the shoreline and kind of walk under the boardwalk and then start again and do that like loop, like wow. sometimes a few times, sometimes more, sometimes once. But I was like, all right, I'm just going to go every day, whether it's even Rain for like shine? one lap. Yeah. I'll just I'll just do that. How long does a lap take? About? It takes, I don't know, a different time, maybe an hour, an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in the rain also or not only? I try to go all the time, you know, because because. People I've get, seen amazing pictures there in snowstorms. Yeah, I mean, it's like, and the thing is, you got to kind of, as a photographer, you have to be patient. And uh, sometimes weather situations that don't seem friendly mm-hmm. end up pr- giving the, you like these amazing pictures, you know? And you just have to go and you just have to be patient and you just have to wait. The thing about Coney, I, I, we were talking earlier. I mean, I've been photographing there since the early 70s. Yeah, I grew up right awesome. nearby there. Uh, my my dad grew up in Coney Island. Most of my family members did, and I grew up in Sheepshead Bay Marine Park, and that was a bike ride away, and it was part of my childhood. Yeah, you're lucky. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't want to argue with you. Um, and, and I've noticed that, again, what's interesting about Coney is that you have in times when it's intense humanity, really intense humanity, and depending on when you go there, it could also be totally deserted. It's weird. And the way it flips around and the different atmospheres that come out of that place. It has to do with weather, time of year, and everything else. Totally and even agree. though we're talking about that's another thing we should mention. We're talking beach photography, and some people might say it's September. Why are we talking about beach photography? It's there every day. It's there every and day. if you go there right now, you'll see people walking around in, in, for all kinds of reasons of business uh, and photographers, and there's always something. In a way, it's sort of like shooting fish in a barrel. Totally, yeah. <laughs> it really and, that's, is. and that's 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 the that's the important part of going every day, because you're not going to see at the one the weather conditions are always different. Yes, it looks different all the time. The the, the sand looks different. The water looks different. The sky looks different. There's different people. They're dressed differently every day. Sometimes you'll see them. Sometimes you won't. Mm-hmm. And there's different people every day. So you have to kind of you have to increase your chances of getting good photos, or I, I, I felt that felt that way, so I'd have to go every day. Have how you, how so early are you going? Because on the, oh your photos, man. it looks like it's I'm either so lazy. dawn or I'm so lazy. Really? So I just go in the <laughs> afternoon. I go in the afternoon. <laughs> okay. People, somebody <laughs> says, "Oh, you should go in the morning and yeah. catch all the Russians." Oh, okay. <laughs> when you said healthy breakfast and meditation, I was thinking it was yeah, like, like, like five hundred. I like my personal time. Okay. You know, <laughs> you get a little work done in the morning and then go. But yeah, always afternoon. Okay, I guess that's a little bit, uh, a little bit lazy on my part. But it's the best. It's the best light, you know. Right. The morning light's good too, but it, you have well, to. Well, see, the, catch the beauty it. of the morning light is that you have the sun hitting the storefronts and the facades on the boardwalk. That's true. All right. Once you get past eleven to twelve, depending on the time of the year, I mean, it's all backlit. That's why I that's like true. sunrise. Mm. But again, you anytime you're there. It's amazing. And, lot, and was, it always, uh, lazy. was it always going to be a portrait series, or did you go thinking, well, I'll I'll work in the the rides and, and I the, didn't know the what storefronts I was, and I the boardwalk? I didn't know. Well, this is what I – so I gave myself these very strict rules, right? Mm-hmm. I said I'm going to do one camera, one only one lens, uh, and I'm not going to show any Coney Island iconography. Right. So no Ooh. no boardwalk. No, no George C. Um, no, Tillyu logos. No amusement park. Nothing that nothing. All that logo stuff. I love. I love all that signs signage, and it's it's like it's iconic and amazing. Oh yeah. But I'm like, all right. So I'm just gonna make a project that it looks like it could be anywhere, because I because it looks it doesn't look as cool as it does in your pictures. You know now. Yeah. I mean, it's still cool. It's it's not. It's never gonna you're really. Saying. You're never gonna really f- clean up Coney Island to look like Dubai, like some of. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> So I gave myself the rules, the same camera, same lens. Uh, oh, and one, one lens? One lens only. Can we ask which yeah, camera and which lens? Which camera and lens? Is, okay, yeah. so it's kind of a weird I, – I, I, have, I have a weird camera choice, but the camera's awesome. It's like that, that Pentax 645Z, okay. which mm-hmm. is sweet. Yeah. Um, but I put an extent – I put like a, 
an adapter mm. on it that I ordered from China on eBay, and I got uh, and I I use a Hasselblad CFE eighty lens. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just an amazing, amazing lens. Uh, but on the Pentax, it's really kind of a little bit wonky, and you have to nail the focus. But what I like about that is you have to slow down. And you really have to like be really super focused. And uh, in my experience, my best pictures come from when I'm. I think most people when they're super kind yeah. of one pointedly Funny how focused. It, it comes up time and time again. Yeah, you this, have to have that focus. Of finding ways to slow yourself down. Yes. Yeah, slow yourself down. Which is weird because a lot of people, like they want a faster autofocus, faster buffers, faster every frames time. You're per right. Second, every time a know? new camera comes, yeah, they talk <clears> about how we, you know it takes the picture before you even take it out of the bag. Right. Yeah, I mean, it takes. I, I think. Yeah. I think even Gus Powell talked to talk. I heard an interview with him. He talking about how digital. It takes you like, you take more pictures, but you're not necessarily catching the moment. You know, he's he makes street photography where the moment is, is the photo, right? Mm -hmm. So so yeah. So I I that was that was intentional to make me slow down, and no I no Coney Island iconography, and then also so sky, sand, water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that 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 was like so like if I'm taking a photo from the boardwalk I'm aiming it at the water right and everything's out of focus uh, or or I'm aiming it down at the sand or the water or the or using the sky as a backdrop so like I would try to eliminate any sign of where the place is I mean some of the pictures you can you can kind of tell but uh, that was that was like the rules I gave myself mm -hmm. so uh -huh. people kind of get this like when you start a project including myself you, you have like this lofty idea of all right. I need to do all this stuff. It's like, no, you don't. You just go every day, get get a good habit of going to one place. Focus. It's gonna look totally different every day. You just mm -hmm. have to you just have to basically just focus in. And uh I mean I, I, I went through that same thing. So I mean I was like I was like I, I can't do a New York project because everything's been done. That was like a story that I told myself forever. Mm. Yeah, but only not true. you're the only one who's seen it through your eyes though. That's the whole thing. Yeah, I think so, and that, and I mean that's true for everyone. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's like, yeah. yeah. So it's like, you have to, yeah, you have to just, just, just do it, you know. And this is really the first time you did a New York project. I mean, have you have you shot around the streets of Brooklyn? Do I, you, yeah, do I have. I have. I, I do a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, as as far as like really focusing and consolidating my energy on a single project, this is the first time yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I know is that you you seem to have a nice rapport with just about every single person that. In the photographs I've seen of yours from this series, now Coney Island <laughs> can be less than friendly at times. I mean, you got to be careful. I mean, I used to walk around in the winter with a four by five camera, and and I once had a friend of mine who was with me saying, "Are you nuts? You're standing there with a dark cloth over your head in Coney Island. <laughs> yeah, Are you crazy?" Yeah. Um, and I didn't think about it. Yes, I probably was. Um, and did you have any? Confrontations or people who were like a little bit less than you, you know what's weird. I didn't really like certain people. I was I only want to photograph people that want to be photographed. That just makes your job way way easier, right? Mm -hmm. the people who like you're kind of like kind of having the weird kind of tension with. It's like what's the point? Why are you wasting your That's time? That's true. I find that I would kind of try to get myself into this headspace and not and actually get out of my head. That was that was what I just get out of my own way, get out of my own thoughts, and just kind of listen. That was like basically my strategy. Like I would just go to, I would talk to people, I would explain what I'm doing. I would explain, you know, I can give you these pictures after I'm done. I would try to, you know, just listen to what they had to say, have some kind of conversation and then kind of just like kind of move around a lot and, and, uh, just like, like, like people would be like, who the hell is this guy? But then at the end, like a lot of the people would be like, oh, like that was really cool and you made my day. And mm -hmm. I'm like, that's like, that's awesome. You know, how many what? shots would you think per Per person, per portrait, you make. Mm. I'm sure it depends. But. It depends. Some certain people I would take more. Mm -hmm. uh, it just depends on like them. So some, so they were like you know like you could sometimes like just a couple, mm -hmm. sometimes like twenty to thirty. Yeah, it really. Depends, yeah. yeah, depends on how you interact and stuff. Like depends that. on how you interact. What's a successful outing? Do you have? Do you want to get <sighs> two or three? Yeah, great pretty portraits much. Or so I would say only one time I didn't get anything, and that was because it was because of weather and it was empty. And it was just like I you call that an excuse. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> true. Yeah. Shame so on you. so I would try to get I would try to get one to three good photos a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and then if I then I and then I felt you kind of get like you know when you get good photos and yeah. you're like oh cool yeah. and then you can leave. Do you ever like bump into the same person the next day and yeah lots of times right yeah, yeah. it's funny yeah. and that uh, yeah that, that's interesting too because people look different every day mm -hmm. and they're not always they're not always in the same mood. Do you go back and get them again if you need to? 
Uh, no, I don't. I just one chance, you know. And there was that lady in the blue bathing suit that I photographed. Her name is Marina. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've posted it, and uh, then the New York Times posted it, mm-hmm. and uh, the daughter of that woman reached out to me, and she said, and it's and it's like kind of a, um, it's a pretty revealing photo, and yeah, this one, that one, yeah, we'll post it. Yeah. On the, on the, and it's uh, okay, we'll post cool, it. Cool, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thanks. And Hold uh, this she, to the microphone. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. And great, and, she, radio and boys the and daughter <laughs> liked the photo, and the mom liked the photo. Uh-huh. So I mean, for me, like that's like that's that's the best case scenario. Like mm-hmm. people that don't think I'm exploiting them, but trying to tell their story, but also just be like kind of raw about it, mm-hmm. you know. So that was successful. And I saw her actually last week, and she walked by me and she goes, "Nice photo. How are you doing? Uh-huh. Good." <laughs> Good to see you. I kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a fairly long New York conversation there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when, called bonding. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the one thing that I, the one thing that I've liked as I'm scrolling through your feed here is that you approach people. I mean, they're not all the same type of portrait. I mean, some are, uh, you know, a, a variation on just a headshot. Others are complete body. Other are kids, you know, in the sand. Others are body parts. So. When you're approaching somebody, do you kind of have in mind already what what about them you want to focus on, or is that something that comes from your little conversations and your interactions, or do you take several, like a headshot, and then you you go down to this woman? I love the shot of it's the woman's. It's basically from her neck down, and she has these long fingernails, and her body is there. I, I always like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I would basically just go hands. be attracted to people who I have a certain spark with, or like I see something that I like about that person. With her, it was just her hands. Her mm-hmm. hands are like amazing yeah. looking. She had this like such a like like long fingers, like mm-hmm. almost like uh, alien or something. Mm-hmm. So I was really drawn to that. So I kind of warmed her up by taking her, her her normal picture, and then I'm like, all right, we're gonna do something a little weird right now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm gonna. You're Coney Island. Yeah. Nothing's weird. But did you know that already that you kind of wanted to go for that? And you, yeah, yeah, I did. But I kind of warmed her up to it because if you start taking pictures of a, a body, right away, people are kind of like, well, what the hell is this? Yeah, guy yeah, doing? yeah. Sure. But I also, but I mean, like the thing is, if you're comfortable doing it, the other person's gonna be comfortable doing it, mm-hmm. and that's the key to not getting in your head when I when taking portraits. You kind of have to just allow, to you have to just allow a shared moment, and by like being self conscious, started when you start doubting yourself or like overthinking, it's gonna ruin the photo, you know, because you, you take yourself out of the present moment, you, mm-hmm. you'll miss the moment, and and that's like just anxiety, and everybody has anxiety, so it's like. Uh, so that's why I would I would prepare myself like going there, I would just like try to eliminate all my anxiety for the day and go to Coney Island and just and just do it. It seems yeah. like you you mentioned you're meditating, you're eating healthy food, and you're not riding a bike. You're taking the train there. It's like yeah. you're just really just letting the everything just boil down a little bit. And just totally, yeah. So when you get off that train, theoretically, you're just open to what's going on. At completely, that point. completely open, and just get really getting out of my getting out of my own way and you feel good when you're on the on the train home does it do yeah it feels great it feels so great yeah, yeah. I feel, it's like it's like a yeah it's a high yeah yeah that's great you know what go ahead i just there's one other shot i'm looking at here and it's a woman in a yellow bikini with a, with a scar on her arm and i think that was mm-hmm. yeah yesterday. i noticed that one also yeah was the scar something that you had seen and, you, and for you, sure yeah, yeah. i mean that's, i love that photo she, thank you thank yeah. you very much yeah she uh she's from um Nigeria, mm-hmm. and uh, I, th- I just saw the scar, you know, and like I, I feel like scars and these kind of things, uh, and then also just uh, like metaphorically, like what uh, traumas or or difficulties people face, often bring out uh, their true character, right? So it's like how how you face those things, and uh, they kind of define you as a person. Mm-hmm. If you can kind of get through a lot of that stuff, um, then you're you're actually have you're actually you're benefited by it in a weird way. And it took me a while to realize that, you know, so like I like, I was attracted to the scar. I thought it was, it was really beautiful, you know? So like, I didn't know the story of the scar. I didn't ask her the story of the scar. I knew did she, she volunteer it at all? Or did it come up? She didn't. I, I started, fo- she's, oh, you're photographing my scar. And I said, yeah, it's beautiful. She's like, oh, I'm kind of like shy about it. And I was like, yeah, but it's like really amazing. Yeah. And, I just, and she let me do it. So it was, it was cool. But, but, and I think the proof is there. I mean, you yeah. kind of, it, you brought out the beauty in in her. It's, it's, yeah, use, it, use, it's a great, use her it's a great history. picture. Yeah. I mean, yeah. thank you. the story is there. The mystery of what happened is there, and her beauty is there. The light is great. So, I mean, I hope I hope she liked it. Um, she did, actually, which is cool. Do you always show your show it afterwards on the screen? or I do. I, I show people their pictures. Well, it's what, I, what I'll do is I'll give them a card, and I'll give them my phone number. And I'll say, hey, look, send me a text message or send me an email, and I'll share the pictures with you. And oftentimes people... Uh, 
people usually like the pictures. I haven't had anybody really say they didn't like them. Mm -hmm. But sometimes people are taken back by uh, like a quality that I shot that they didn't really see in themselves. Hmm. And they're like, and they're like, whoa, this is kind of weird because like you made me look. I don't really see myself that way. Because mm -hmm. most of these yeah. people are there. They're there when they look at a picture. It's they were at a party or some little barbie, and, and somebody just took a picture. Yeah, you took a portrait. Yeah, they yeah they they don't. That's they, the difference. It, totally for sure. Mm -hmm. Like this, the girl with the scar. She really liked the picture, and she was actually really she she contacted me just recently. She was she's really interested in getting into photography. Mm -hmm. So she was asking me about cameras, and she's like, yeah, I really like the picture you took. Have you not heard back from some people? Uh, I actually heard back from most people. Sir, a couple of them I didn't hear back from. But um, the majority I've heard back from and the majority actually like the pictures. Cool. Like if it would, ch it would change the relationship of, of, uh, that I would have with the pictures if they didn't like it. Right. Or they felt like I was like uh, using them or making them look uh, ugly or, or weird or, or like... I like that would that would kind of make me I'm, I don't know I would just get all weird about it I would feel strange I understand that for sure yeah. for sure my goal of this project is sort of to like help elevate people mm -hmm. right like so I'm like elevating myself I'm elevating them and then ideally why I put it on Instagram is because like I can get help other people or inspire other people to get out of their own heads and to go just be creative whatever that means for them and then also like just to share with people that aren't necessarily photographers. You know, like for a long time I was like, oh, Instagram is uh, is like stupid. It's like I should keep all the work <laughs> precious. And a lot of a lot of photographers feel that way. It's yeah. they think it's dumb, you know. Yeah. And I did too at one point. But it's like it's like there's no better place to share pictures. Now, are you getting? I mean, uh, just from looking at your work and and seeing this feed. Is this a series that's getting you a lot more attention than you thought in yeah, such a, a lot short, more, short time? Yeah, a lot more. It's really crazy. And is Instagram kind of at the heart of that? I mean, I, I know it was in the New York is. Times. And, it and, is. You know. I mean, the whole thing has been kind of overwhelming. Yeah. That's great. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, I found this just through Instagram, like luck of the draw, and it's it was cool. almost immediate. I was like, let's get this guy on the show now. Wow, thank you. Know? you. Thank I mean, you. That's cool. Um, and can I ask the, the format? I mean, you, you shoot with medium format regularly. I shoot with I, I I'm a super hardcore film guy uh -huh. forever, you know. And then I, I recently got the Pentax, okay. and I'm like I, I love the digital man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You ever going back? To, are you ever going back to I, film? I think I will for a couple projects, but to be honest, the digital is so good. Yeah, because the quality is awesome. I, it, it prints big, and you can share it. You can like share it on um I can share it on uh, social media. I can share the pictures with people. It changes the whole relationship to the picture, and with the people, I imagine you have yeah, a bigger camera like, and you're, you're taking they, it down. And they, they love it. You know, like, I, I, I would, I can't like shoot with my Hasselblad or my four x five. Oh, I'll give you a photo in three months. It's not gonna be the, it wouldn't be the same thing. Yeah. And I knew that uh, the volume of the work that I'd have to put out for this is was important, and also being able to share it immediately. Mm -hmm. That just changed the whole relationship with the subject, and it changed the relationship with sharing the work itself. I mean, and another thing about it is that even though uh, mostly everything I've seen has been on on my phone. You feel the medium format. Well, I was always kind of shooting with uh, with uh, with with medium format and larger formats cameras. I just like that better. It's a, it has a different presence to it. Okay. Um, and I just the quality for me is like a big a yeah, big factor in that. Um, yeah. But before shooting this stuff, I was always shooting in a more rigid fashion. I was always had it was like I gotta have a tripod. I gotta have my camera. I gotta have my light meter. And I'm just like and like everything's like everything's straight. Okay, cool. Take the photo. This was like, all right, just forget all that. Basically, break break all those rules and try to shoot shoot in a much looser fashion. And is so, this is, is that a total break for you for the first time? It, is, it sounds like you've never really went out this way. No, I haven't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's different different way of working. So this is really a whole thing. Is real, real catharsis for you the past two months. I mean, it yeah, feels yeah, like street, totally. It feels totally. like street photography as much as it does like portrait photography. That's I cool. To say. I mean, that's great. I think that's, yeah, thank you. that's part of it. A lot of people listening to this who really have no experience of Coney Island, they might have seen pictures of it, and obviously if, if you never heard of it, I don't know where you've been. Um, but Coney Island has an interesting history. It's, it started off back in the 1800s, and um, Manhattan itself, the city was a, 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 a it was all tenements and cement and heat and humidity and dirt and filth, and Coney Island was the... Different than today, right? <laughs> yes. Some things don't really change. 
change. No. And Coney Island was like this place where you could escape to. And it, back then, it took a, over a day to get there. There wasn't the Belt Parkway, and, and the subways didn't come through until the early 1900s. And that was like, but the earliest subway stopped right there at the beach, and that's when it started happening. And it quickly became a place where it, it just attracted all kinds of people, from the very finest to the kind of the deviants. And um, it, if you were to go back there at the turn of the century and you were touring around, first of all, there was Steeplechase Park, which I remember, Luna Park Dreamland, which had a steel pier that went a half a mile out on the ocean, handled 60,000 people at a time, and it was an excursion liner that left Manhattan every hour to take people there. Um, in a single day, you could witness the San Francisco earthquake, the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, the Galveston flood, the burning of Rome and Moscow, a couple of naval battles, and they were all uh, reenacted on an hourly basis. Um, there was Lilliputia, which was a sociological disaster, a blue, <laughs> a blue dome of creation, the largest dome in the world where the end of the world, according to Dante, was presented. Okay, A simulated flight over Manhattan years before the Wright brothers ever flew, a miniature reproduction of Switzerland, a miniature reproduction of the canals of Venice. And then they had fighting the flames in which an entire city block is engulfed in flames with people trying to escape the upper floors of the buildings, and they stage it several times a day. Crazy. That's what was there. <laughs> and that's what, I mean, it's, 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 Try, it's kind of hard to imagine that. And also another interesting thing is that a lot of relics from different world's fairs, the Chicago Exposition, ended up in Coney Island. When all these big uh, extravaganzas were over, they packed up the stuff and it ended up in Coney Island, which is really interesting. Was a lot of this from that Delirious New York? Delirious New York, yeah. yeah it's, Colossus, Del it's Delirious New York, Delirious Manhattan. Delirious New York. I think. Yeah, yeah. by, by uh, Ram, Ram Koolhaas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, an yeah. amazing book. Yeah. An ama I, I, it was about 30 pages on Coney Island. Right. And I, I mean, I thought I knew a lot about it. This right. just blew me away. Right. But he talks about Coney Island being the kind of the birthplace of the skyscraper and, and like yes. testing grounds for what Manhattan would become yes. 20, yes. 30 yes. years later. Specifically, yeah. the fellow who did Dreamland, who also ended up doing the Chrysler building, he had like over 300, more than 300 spires built into it, even though they, did, they, could, they were too narrow to walk into. But at night when it was lit up, it looked like a miniature city. And this is the way he pre-visionized, like you said, he was able to envision what Manhattan could look like. Well, an interesting thing too, though, about the, at least the photography of, of Coney Island is that ever since this era, which would have been, I guess, the, the, you know, the golden years, people continue to photograph. And it's all the decay that has always been, at least in the past 50 years, has been incorporated into most of the work. Yeah. I mean, yours, obviously, you're dealing with the portraits of the people on the beach. And so you have, you know, a lot going on. You not only have the beach and the water and the relaxation and the sun, but you have the boardwalk and the rest of the city right there, which is, now it's, you know, it's coming back. But, you know, most of the photographers that we spoke about earlier deal with that sense of decay in yeah. some way, too. Well, even a lot know. of my earlier photo, when I started shooting back too. with yeah. a 4 by 5 back yeah. in the 70s and 80s, it was layers. You could actually look at a building, and you could see decades mm -hmm. of, of, of layers of history going on there. And, and every, year, every year it was just painted over. Mm -hmm. Then when it starts you peeling... Feel it. You feel it when you go there, too. You definitely yeah. feel the history of that place. Yeah. Yeah, sure. and also the kind of people it attracted. There's a huge spectrum, and I like that even like the homeless people. Uh, it's just a, like about like treating everybody as equal too. This thing also yeah, photography is like that though. You see yeah. that. I mean, you really feel like the uh, uh, the dem democratic nature of it. If that's the word. I mean, you have yeah. you have tough guys, you have kids, old people. It's and they all seem to be treated, at least with your eye, pretty much the same. I treat yeah. them all the same, yeah. and I think I think they all are the same. It's just weird. Like I, even like uh, certain people you'll meet. Uh, they wouldn't be considered maybe like a high caliber person can be like, say this like really profound stuff or like mm -hmm. can really be moving or like just try to like try to listen to people, you know, because if you listen to people, then they'll tell you like things. That's the thing like, I really worked on like this project and worked on personally, just trying to listen uh, deeper to people, what they say. And then when you do that, people will just start telling you all kinds of stuff. Mm. Like they'll That's just true. volunteer like like very personal information, especially since uh, they know that they might not see you again. It's and easy, it's yeah. really weird. It's like, yeah, and you just so you just start listening. You just shut up mm -hmm. and you just listen, mm -hmm. and they'll start talking you a lot of stuff. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Not, not to interrupt your part about listening, but uh, how long? How, how long? How long? 
How long do you engage these people usually when you're taking their photo? Are you there? Are you with them for an hour or half hour? Fifteen no, minutes? Less, like like ten, fifteen minutes. Yeah, okay. sometimes less. Gotcha. Yeah. So you ever have someone chase you down and say, "Hey, you give me get a picture of my girl or my baby or whatever"? I wouldn't want to do it. It's yeah. like nah, so no. Nah. Nah. <laughs> you have to choose. Yeah. 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 Or like when people are like, "Say, oh, let me see all the pictures." Uh, yeah. No. So let me ask about your color because it seems to be at the heart of a lot of the people you choose or at least you pick out. And, and this is, this is one of the first photos that I saw. And it's a photo of a, of a girl's pink hair with the horizon line of the ocean and the sky. And is that something you're always on the lookout for? Yeah. Always looking for color. I like uh, colored hair. I yeah. like people with dark complexion just cause their, their skin reflects light differently. Are you bringing a, a reflector or no reflector? Nothing. Just all, no, all natural. Natural light. Just all yeah. natural. Yeah. And now uh, we'll show this one if it's okay yeah. uh, on our site, but did you shoot a, a shot of her face and a couple portraits first and then said, you know what, give me this? Or did you just grab I, this one? I actually didn't even ask her permission okay. for that one. <laughs> that was another question. Yeah, oh. so like 95% I'm asking permission. Certain times I'll see something where I'm just like, if I were to say something, it would just disrupt would the thing, right. whatever was happening. Right. So yeah, I just saw her and then I just got, so I just started snapping away. Now, have you seen some of the photos of like Wayne Lawrence? Uh, yeah, Wayne's and, a personal and, friend of mine. Oh, okay. So, so. honestly, like uh, with Wayne's photography, I almost feel like I'm kind of nodding my head in a couple of photos that I made just to kind of give him a, a kind of a artistic shout out yeah. in the pictures. Yeah. So that's pretty intentional too. I like mm -hmm. Wayne's work a lot, mm -hmm. but I'm tr I was trying to do my own thing. Of course, yeah. And uh, kind of put my own stamp on it. But at the same time, I, I am kind of trying to nod my head to the people that did inspire me to mm -hmm. do one, a project in New York, and then also, I mean, it's a beach project, so it's like, I mean, Bruce Gilden, Stephen Shore, mm -hmm. uh, Robert Frank, so many people. Do you know, uh, what's her name, uh, Renee Dykstra? Yeah, of course. Her so also, it's yeah. like Renee so Dykstra. Pretty, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, have her, I have her beach book. Yeah. I'm definitely referencing uh, all those people. We have no choice. You have to. You have to, and it's also like, it's also to know, like, it's good to know what has been done before. And it's like, and, and Wayne is a personal friend of mine, you know? So like in a way he sort of inspired me to like, to do something in New York, mm -hmm. you know? Like, and like, and like other people who, uh, my other peers who are like doing New York projects, like always had this envy, you know? I'm like, shit, man, <laughs> I need a New York project. <laughs> but it's all been done before, but it hasn't, you know? No. no. And that's, and that's, and that's the, that's the challenge, you know? Have you, are you ever do uh, monochrome at all? Like black and black white? Black and white, yeah. I'm not as interested in it. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I love color. I love color. Let me let me ask you about your on your Instagram feed. You have <laughs> these all these great photos from Coney Island. No captions, no hashtags. Is that a conscious choice? Yeah, it is. Okay. People so people comment. Oh, like it's really nice to know their names. I'm like, yeah. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know Bob. enough. You know enough about them from the picture. You don't need to. Yeah, yeah. I think it's about it's about stories, right? Yeah. And yeah. also, I, f I feel like uh, it's. You know, it, it, some of them, it would be nice. But, you know, sometimes, like, the most meaningful portraits I got with people or had this, like, crazy, like, exchange uh, that was felt very profound, we didn't even introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. But does that make it a, does that make it less uh, important or, like, does it does it necessary? I don't really think so. Have you know, you it's, like, it's like you're telling, you're also telling. It's weird because you're collaborating with the other person and they're giving you something and you're bringing something. And then you're kind of allowing like something else to happen, which is like just try to be present to. But they're really like self-portraits, right? Like they're like uh, every portrait sort of a self-portrait. Yeah. You yeah. know, they're like it's, it's hard to escape that. It's hard to not tell your own story through other people. So given the kind of the short life of this project so far and the intensity, how do you see this thing ending? Oh, I don't want it to end. You That's don't. the thing, yeah. Uh, but it's going to end. I think I'm going to shoot for another week and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to call it. So... Whether I decide to go back next summer, I don't. I don't know. Like I, 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 I still, I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. I feel like I want to continue it, but I also feel like it's representative of a certain period of my life, and then also time, and then like I don't know if it, I need to do it more. It's yeah. completed. At a certain point, you feel that, that I kind of I feel got like this out of my system. This I, is good. I, I kind of feel like it is completed, you know. And I'm kind of like hanging on because I like, you know, I like sharing these pictures and like I was like I went to see my parents and like you know you don't only have to post photos of Coney Island on your Instagram now and I'm like oh man I feel like I only should now <laughs> but now it's like all right now I have this like a uh, big following on Instagram I'm like well, all right what do I do next have your numbers gone nuts because of this super nuts yeah, yeah. it's pretty crazy mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I got like uh, something like uh, mm -hmm. uh like six seven thousand followers extra uh -huh. 
Uh, well deserved. Well deserved. Thanks, man. We're going to take a break and we come back. What are we going to do? We're going to talk gear with Todd, uh, whatever his last name is. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that guy Todd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. We hope you're enjoying this edition of the BH Photography Podcast. Send us a tweet at BH Photo Video, hashtag BH Photo Podcast. We are back. Um, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, a lot of people think that taking pictures at the beach is something you do only during the summer. But no, the beach is never closed. They're always there. And uh, even though we're going into fall, followed by winter, there's plenty of reasons to go back to places like Coney Island or any other shore resort. You, you have the ocean. You have sand. You have nature. You have people. You have architecture. There is a number of, of subjects you could be photographing, and a lot of them are, are all juxtaposed together. The problem that you have is that you're dealing with uh, sand, wind, salt, and all of the things that you want to keep away from your camera equipment. So Todd is going to give us a few hints on uh, what we can do to protect our gear when dealing with all of these elements. If there's an opportunity to shoot on the beach and you have a camera, don't hesitate because you don't have what you think are pr is protective equipment. You can just be careful mm -hmm. with what you have and you should be able to walk away with a functioning camera after you get that magical shot. So okay, good. We're done, right? We're done. <laughs> okay. At the very least, what would yeah. you what would you suggest? So I mean, yeah, we the, can get these underwater yeah. housings, but right. You at, know. at the least, um, you want to have a filter on your lens, and there's a on the internet these days. There's this, all these conjecture, all this conjecture about whether a UV filter is good, if it's bad, if it protects the lens. Like the bottom line, the thing protects the front element of your lens. If you're getting blasted by sand, it's not it's a sacrificial coatings, thing. It's not yeah. good for anything. Yeah. yeah, it's it's use a use a UV filter. Don't oops, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, some, some, well, Mark is <laughs> taking copious notes yeah. right now. So um, use a UV filter. Um, don't if you have an inter interchangeable lens camera. Don't change the lens at the beach, unless you absolutely have to. And if you do change the lens, turn your back to the wind. Yeah. Keep it. You know. Try like stuff's gonna be blowing. So try to keep the dust out. And aim the right. camera downward because right. gravity helps. Yes. Yeah. But having said that, if you're if you're, I'm going to the beach for a week, or I'm going for a day, and it's gonna be windy, and there's gonna be salt spray, and I kind of want to get in the surf a bit. There's things you can do to keep your camera safe. And there are underwater housings that are hellaciously expensive and custom made to conform around your camera. There's also a bunch and, that are like basically big Ziploc bags with glass ports in the front. Right. A couple companies, yeah. uh, Aquapack mm -hmm. and Dicapack make uh, kind of the generic universal Ziploc bag for a registered trademark on Ziploc, but they're basically bags that have uh, an opening for your lens. And they usually have like a, a plastic or a glass lens uh, that s works like a filter mm -hmm. on front of your lens. Anyway, right. those things range from like 30 to 50 to 60 bucks. So I, I uh, use one on my Sony, and they yeah. work very, very well. Plus, you, if you're using longer lenses, you can actually get extensions to the front right. that you can do that with. Yeah, I mean, it's not a huge investment. No. It'll protect your gear. And then it'll also give you the peace of mind. Like, one thing is, if you have something that's waterproof, it's going to keep sand out because sand is larger than uh, droplets of water. Or sand water. is easier. So, um, yeah, sand's tough, though. I mean, that's one yeah. thing you think you're good. You know, you have your camera in your bag. It's sitting on top of the blanket, and then you go down in the water. You go for a swim. You come back. Some wind is blown into it. It's sand yeah. gets everywhere. Sand gets everywhere. So that's the interchangeable. Lens. Anything waterproof is going to keep the sand out of your camera. Don't change the lens when your camera is exposed. Um, one thing I know, like, I've brought my camera bag to the beach, and you'll get sand in your bag. So oh, yeah. when all, when everything's said and done, go home, take a, a slightly damp cloth, wipe down your gear. Make sure you, you know, a Q-tip or a blower, just get the dirt off. But also stick a vacuum cleaner inside your camera bag and suck up all the sand in there. <laughs> I also try to avoid putting my bag down on the sand because aside from the fact that you are now in contact with the sand, it doesn't get attracted. Yeah. When you're down to the sand level and there's wind blowing, that's where you get everything. Even right. a foot above the ground, there's stuff blowing around that gets into your bag inevitably. Yeah, totally. The, and the the other advantage of having waterproof stuff is if you want to wander out into the surf or something, you can have you can get you know if the if the waves yeah. are good and or you're you know do whatever you yeah. bring it into the water. Don't worry about. Well, it's a great out. perspectives. I mean, yeah. you just go you know go up waist level and looking looking back or looking yeah. at your family, whatever happens to be from that perspective of being in the water. Right. Often can make a nice little photo. That actually kind of lead, leads to another point is uh, 
if you're buying something new and you know you're going to be working in adverse conditions, t tough places like the beach or whatever, then get purchase protection for your gear. Does that uh, cover... Uh does that cover the if you drop it in the water? <laughs> I think it, I actually I think some I think some plants do definitely read the fine print, but they're they're pretty comprehensive, you know. Like so, I drop my my Pentax in the water. It's cool if yeah. you have that plan, <laughs> or um, if it's not a new purchase, uh, you can get personal property insurance uh, or renters insurance things like that. Uh, I have a personal property floater with floater. my floater. Yeah, uh, yeah, no but pun it's intended. Only if it floats, no if it goes under. That's it. <laughs> yeah. You void. But uh, you pay a little bit extra to your insurance company, and then you, your gear is protected. So now I, I don't know if they still do, do this, but <laughs> <laughs> Leica used to have a passport warrant. I don't know if they still have this, but for two years or three years, okay. Yeah. They basically would replace your camera if if, if it became damaged. It's if you dropped it down the side of a mountain, as long as you can get them. The, the pieces, as long as you they replace down together. it, okay? <laughs> yeah. However, if you drop it in the ocean, you can't retrieve it, you own it. That's it. Mm. Go on. So continue for us there, Todd. Talk yep. to us about cameras that you can take into the water because there's a whole ton of them now, and they're actually pretty good. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, – the, the genre is called the tough cam because yeah. uh, yeah. waterproof, freeze-proof, drop-proof, dust-proof. Um, again, if, you're, if you have this vision of doing – photography and the surf or something that's the camera you're going to want because they're built to take a beating and uh i've owned about four or five in the years yeah. and they're, i'm always taking them into the water pools oceans and stuff sure. and that's yeah. what's great about yeah they're family, it's pretty good for families too yeah, yeah, yeah it's pretty cool well, now what about dslrs most of them now will have this weather sealing weather right. sealing lenses and, and bodies yeah you know they're hard they're hard chassis are pretty good so you're going to be all right. I mean, you're taking those cameras to the beach. They're going to get right. sprayed. They're going to be fine. You have to clean up the salt water when you get home. But in general, you're not going to yeah. worry about that. Well, a lot of the new ones are weatherproof. I my concern was sand, like my concern with sand is that sand gets into the mechanicals. Yes. Yeah. Um, where a, a seal to keep out water might keep water out, but a grain of sand might get to, to that seal and either damage that seal or create an opening where more things can get in. I think you know, like, cleaning your equipment. Post shooting, when you're down there, is, yeah. is critical for this because That's what I you do. have to look at yeah. every single, if you, every body, every lens, everything that you have, and like you mentioned, vacuum yeah. out your bag. If you see sand, keep cleaning and blowing it out because right. you don't want it inside. Yeah, so one thing I did after I'd shoot, I would just like add some uh, Zeiss lens spray and mm -hmm. some alcohol and swabs. You know, right. I'd just clean up the mm -hmm. body, yeah. get in with the Q-tips and clean the whole thing up. Yep. Well, you have the advantage of just using the one lens. That makes a difference, too. Yeah, I, haven't, I literally haven't taken that lens off. Right. So. Right. Right. so let's talk about a bit about uh, wedding photography on the beach. Uh, we wanted to throw that out at you at the last minute there. I mean, right. lighting. I know you don't use lighting, Mark, and, and I wouldn't ever take a light to the beach. That's me, though. Uh, right. But if you're shooting weddings at, at the beach, which a lot of people do, you need something. You need a reflector. Yeah. You need you know a battery-powered strobe. There are a lot of uh, a yeah. compact off-camera flashes right now that are battery powered that you yeah. can light up small groups very easily. Right. Pro I mean, you can there's a you can use a speed lights or uh, Pro Photo has the B ones which are uh, battery powered mono lights impact well, B2, just B two or B two sorry are tiny yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the the B one and the B twos yeah yeah yeah, yeah and then yeah. Uh, Impact just came out with the Venture which is a uh, even smaller more compact than the Pro Photo lights brand new um, and again like so, we mentioned speed lights you have, you have a couple of speed lights it's amazing what you could do with them as well especially right. with fill flash and the high sync speeds and stuff so there's a lot of things you can do lighting wise I'll say that, I'll say that this about those lights so the, the mono lights definitely not designed for sand I mean the, the they have oh. open backs for cooling and things like that that you've yeah, it tips yeah, over in the wind. I would not go on a windy day that's the beauty um, of yes, a reflector <laughs> yes yeah yeah the reflector is Perfect for the beach because you can B, see what's going B on. The ones are good too. Those yeah. they're kind of sealed. Yeah, um, but yeah, that's I mean something I mean to consider. Obviously, you get you need that fill light on the face if you're right. if you really want to get those type of wedding right. shots. If not, they're gonna have <laughs> you yeah. get a problem with your bride. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, anything else then to toss at us gear wise? Any any thoughts? Anybody? Just do silhouettes of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> hey, can I see that scar? Hey, and then, then you just open it up in Photoshop. It's easy. Yeah. I'll say the last thing was, it, you know, if you don't have a Dica pack bag or something, you can grab a, a Ziploc bag or a trash bag and wrap your gear, leave an opening for the for the viewfinder and the lens, and yeah. it's better than nothing. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, By the way, something that's also not camera related. Well, it's photographic related. A tripod. Um, if you're shooting at the beach with a tripod. I highly suggest 
taking the ends of the legs and wrapping them with Ziploc bags. You do not want sand getting into the threads mm -hmm. of the locks for the yep. legs or anything like that. I've, I, I've had tripods trashed from that. I did a series with dune photography and uh, spent an entire evening rebuilding – Breaking down and rebuilding a flip, a uh, you know, flip lock tripod, mm -hmm. and after that, I brought my wooden tripod. Which so you think a, a twist is is would be worse? No, a twist lock is better than I a think. Th a twist is better. Okay, like uh, the enduros, because a lot of the twists have seals on them. Okay, so it tries. Mine to, didn't. You know, and yeah. Let me tell it, you, that sand you got trashed. With the, the, with threads. the flip locks, you have moving more moving parts, springs or yeah. whatever, you know, and that stuff gets all gummed up. And usually they're they're coated with oil. Yeah, and that oil just holds the sand. So. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Wooden tripods are fantastic for the beach, dunes, things like that. Good point. Old school. All right. Now that we have another week and a half where you're going to be photographing on the island, sure. um, <laughs> have you had any thoughts yet about what your next project might be? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Would you share it with us? Uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the, 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 the next big thing is uh, I'm going to go back to India and f uh, finish my uh, Bolo Sonihal uh, Nahang Sikh uh, warrior project. That's something I want to turn into a book. And I'm also going to start working on the book project with the Coney stuff. I want to do a book and gallery show. So anybody anybody who's interested, publishers, galleries. And for those who want <laughs> to see that. more of your work and, and, and publishers who want to see sure. what they're going to be putting into the book they're doing for you, where sure. they go? Sure, it's uh, my website, which is markhartmanphoto.com, and then my Instagram page, which is mark, M-A-R-K, Hartman, H-A-R-T-M-A-N. That's just my name. Check out, that, check out the Instagram. I mean, yeah. the website too, but... It's everybody's on, you know, it's like, the, uh, it's weird. People are like, why are you putting those on, all on Instagram? It's like, that's, everybody looks, sees images now. Yeah. It's like, so less people look, right less people look on websites that's than they right. do on Instagram. It's true. Right. It's I mean, true. So it's like, all right. Anyway. Also, but this is a great series for Instagram. It just fits. I, mean, I agree. The format I agree, and, yeah. and the, and the, time, the, right the timetable, everything about I, it I seems agree. great. You know, the, the fact that you're getting close to a thousand likes per image without one hashtag and stuff that's pretty amazing that it's crazy you get right? that you're having that following where people it's are just going crazy. to look yeah so i have anxiety about keeping that up <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah so i, I do want to i do want to start another project i'm i have i'm kind of i have some uh, miles i might take a trip to japan mm. and uh, work on some less sort of cohesive stuff or figure it out when i'm there and then uh and then the india thing and just try to figure it out Still working on that. All right, we look forward to seeing what and you do. And just thank you. FYI, we'll th uh, maybe throw this in after the last comment, but this would make an awesome gallery show. I mean, yeah, obviously, you have huge files from from the, the medium format Pentax. Yeah. They're going to print beautifully. The colors are great. So, so yeah, it, the prints I'm, are great. I'm, have you have you printed anything yet? It, I printed a thirty by forty the other day. Uh -huh. and I'm like, why am I shooting four by five? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it has a different. It does have a different look, but you know, it's it's uh, it looks great. Like, it, they look kind of filmy, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as long as you kind of, you know, you process the files properly and, you know, it's like there's not a huge difference anymore. I mean, it has the, the film has the more organic look, right? Yes. So, and, that's, and that's why I was holding on to it for so long. But nothing like outputting digital. It's just so fast, you know? And it, the quality is, is, to me, is good enough for it for now. And you know what you got right then and there. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> okay, Mark Hartman, thank you so much for yeah, joining thanks us. Thanks for having us. me, guys. That was fun. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Todd Vorenkamp, thanks for <laughs> joining us. And thank you to John Harris and Jason Tables. And thank you to our listeners. And remember, take a moment, leave a review for us, uh, comments on iTunes. We do appreciate it, and we do take a look at all of your thoughts. Hashtag BH Photo Podcast on Instagram if you want. That's right. Just as John said, uh, you can do that too. And as always, thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs>